from Las Vegas, Nevada, the entertainment capital of the world. I'm David Gabry, and this is the Vegas Faces Podcast, where we talk with Las Vegas locals about what it's really like to live in the city of lights. Whether you're living in Vegas, moving to Vegas, or just visiting Vegas and looking for new adventures, together let's discover the hidden gems that make Sin City the most visited place on earth. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Vegas Faces Podcast. Look at what we've got today. We have got a whiskey and cigars extravaganza. We've got mom in the house today. Say hey, ma. Hey, how's everybody? We've got a couple of whiskey professionals in the house today. They're going to school us. They're going to show us the ropes. They're going to tell us how it's done. JD, kick it off. Hi, my name is JD. I am the founder of It's Just Booze and the director of education for the Whiskey Attic here in Las Vegas. We're going to learn how to taste today. i got a different methodology for us to learn, and uh, I'll walk you guys through the cigars I brought as well so we can taste some cigars and go with our whiskey and have a good old time and, you know, get a little buzzed. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And Michael? All right, hey, everybody. My name is Michael Bosch. I am a tater, but I've come into the world of uh, starting my own whiskey brand and uh, relaunching Moss Distillery Company from uh, Pennsylvania. It was the only distillery in the town I grew up with, and it shut down around 1916. So uh, we're going to relaunch that in a modern way. Nice. Love it. Love it. I'm so happy that you guys are here because, like, for me, Thanks. if I'm going to take it back to college, right, everyone knew whiskey and Coke. Like, that was, sure. that was, and you felt like, you know, you felt like, uh, like, hey, I drink whiskey. Like, it's, I don't drink that vodka stuff. Like, I drink whiskey with a nice cold cola. And then somewhere along the way, I felt like I need to be an adult and just drink it on the rocks or even neat if I'm really feeling like a true daredevil. Sure. But how did, like, like, what, what do I need to know if I want to be like a real deal whiskey professional? Cool. I can, I'm going to answer something very quickly and very yep. easily for you. The right way to drink it is how you like to drink it. Um, tasting and drinking are different things. So tasting is about evaluation and discussion. Drinking is about enjoyment and effect. So if you like it neat or on the rocks or with Coke or whatever, God bless. That's what you should be doing. So you were saying that, you know, you would drink whiskey and Coke. Uh, Michael and I were talking about before, there's actually one soda that was invented as a whiskey mixer. One of my favorites. One. Okay. Can I guess? Anybody Go know? Ahead. Is it Sprite? Or You're actually really on the right Ginger track. Ginger ale. You're yeah. seven up. getting there. Close. No. You're on the right track with Sprite and with Sprite and, uh, Seven Up. It's actually Mountain Dew. Yep. No kidding. So no yeah. way. Yep. Really? So Mountain Dew was invented in 1941 in Knoxville, yep. Tennessee. Mom. Hey. Um, <laughs> and so uh, it was invented by two brothers who wanted this specific lemon lime soda that they wanted to mix with their whiskey, and they couldn't get the one they liked, so they made their own. Wow. The term Mountain Dew is actually an 18th century term for whiskey. So if Mountain Dew goes with whiskey, oh. anything goes. So uh, with tasting. You should taste things neat first. The distiller has said taste it neat. Not a single whiskey has been put in a bottle where the distiller says add something to it. It's ready to go once it's in the bottle. <laughs> but if you like it with crushed ice, that's how yeah. you should drink it. If you like it with agree, Coke Zero, drink it that way. So quick little whiskey overview just so everyone understands. It's very simple. The U.S. government defines whiskey as a grain-based spirit. Use any grain you want, so like corn, rye, wheat, barley weird stuff like quinoa and amaranth and if you want to please don't um and then uh whiskey has to be exposed to oak that's it we actually don't have to age whiskey in the united states we can have it literally go down an oak luge and that counts so it's a little bit different with bourbon which is a lot of the things that we brought today it's oh, a little yeah. more specific so bourbon has to be made in the united states so all 50 states can and do make bourbon technically you can also make bourbon in puerto rico and Guam, Ooh. the U.S. Virgin Islands. No one has. Hawaii? Uh, yeah. There's a bourbon distillery in oh, Hawaii. Yeah, there is one Alaska? in Alaska? Yep. There's bourbon distillery in Alaska, too. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, so, so, yeah. If it's, I'm kind of biased because my whole thing is, like, if it's not from Kentucky, it's not, like, the right, real no, deal. I totally no, disagree. So, but, like, yeah, I know. That, yeah, we need true. Now it's Tennessee. We need That's true, Jack Daniels. The U.S. Mm -hmm. Virgin Islands. Yeah, I'm down. All right. Let's Virgin go. Islands so has the, a So the reason why that people can associate bourbon in Kentucky, right? There's Bourbon County, Kentucky. That's you are, are you are you guys familiar with where Bourbon County comes from? Mm -mm. So, uh, the Bourbon family was a French royal family. They were the number one troop and dollar contributor to the to the American Revolutionary War effort. Wow. So when Thomas Jefferson is pres is a governor of Virginia, 
post-Revolutionary War as a gift to the Bourbon family, because we had no money, we had no economy, he granted this giant swath of land in Western Virginia. So, wow. you know, to the end of the time. Um, and it was Bourbon County. It would have been 37 counties of Kentucky and Virginia today. Wow. Because that's Bourbon County. The name Bourbon Whiskey actually comes out of New Orleans. Wow, there they we would, go. They, oh. would bar- they would barge the barrels down the boys. Mississippi River. And then on in New Orleans, on Bourbon Street, they'd process the barrels. And they'd stamp the barrels Bourbon Street Whiskey, which then colloquially became bourbon whiskey. Yeah. Marketing made it yeah. Kentucky bourbon. And the other reason why there's wow. so many big brands from Kentucky and Tennessee going back to Thomas Jefferson when he's now president in 1810, he grants free land to anybody who wants it in the western frontiers of Tennessee and Kentucky. But you had to dedicate a certain percentage of that land to growing corn. Well, we think about the people who were taking that land. They were the immigrants coming over from Ireland and Scotland and Germany, Bavaria, these places that have a alcohol culture and so you have these people who have an alcohol culture and you're forcing them to grow grains what are they going to do make they're going to make booze mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's why like like take the beams yep. as an example right okay. the jim beam the actual original spelling of their name is b-o-e b-o-e-h-m okay oh, yes yeah, yeah it is. that and it became anglicized um, to beam interesting wow because it's an like old german jd mm-hmm. what do you not know about whiskey i feel like we have a whiskey encyclopedia in the so, house and i'm gonna <laughs> i'm enjoying this very much you know it's it, there's tons. This you is know, amazing. There's, it's, when, He's a scholar. When this you, is great. When I you love spend it. every single day. You have a day. PhD in whiskey. This is. Eh. So it's interesting. So the guy I trained under, his name is Sir Dr. Adam Carmer. Um, Adam was actually my wines professor when I went to UNLV. So wow. I've been in Vegas 16 years. I've known Adam for like 14 of it. So Adam was actually knighted for his work in alcohol education. <laughs> um, that's that's sir, awesome. That sir is a real honorific, like with a king and a sword and all that <laughs> no, stuff. That's really awesome. So he's who trained wow. me. And then when you literally, it's it's one of the philosophies that I preach as a as an alcohol educator. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, right? You can be in real estate, you can be in alcohol, it can be whatever. All the conversation is is vocabulary, and until you speak the vocabulary, it's all alien. So there are basic day one things that you have from your career and your career and your career that yeah. will go right over my head. But to you, it's the back of your hand. For me, my, my core vocabulary and my core language is Whiskey. liquor. It's amazing. So unfortunately, I drink a lot. All right. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. Let's, may, let's pour something. Yeah, let's Whatever you want to uh, cool. showcase first. So, so let's start. So I'm going to teach you guys really quickly a new way to taste. So, Love it. Um, We've all been to a tasting, yeah, wine tasting, whiskey tasting, oh, stuff yeah. like that. All kinds. So typically, when you go to a tasting, it's a hierarchy of you look, you smell, you taste. The problem with that is a lot of alcohol can put food coloring in it. So how do you judge the color? The answer is you can't. So we're going to skip that. Then they have you smell it. Your sense of smell is not based on your nose. It's based on a nerve behind your nose called your olfactory bulb. There's nothing inside of this protecting that. So when you nose heavily prior to tasting, you numb out your sense of smell uh-huh. before you have a chance to use it. And it's like when you go to a wine tasting. Your first wine, ooh, I smell stuff. By wine three, it smells like something. By wine five, it smells like fuck. It smells like wine. <laughs> it's because you're- This is a child-friendly show, it, not Say great. whatever you want. So, so <laughs> you're, you're, we do not have a boss. So your, um, your olfaction, your sense of smell fatigues quickly. Okay. With liquor, you got about six seconds. So uh-huh. I don't want you to smell first because I want you to really be able to you know, get at with the flavors there. Okay. So then when they, have you, when they have you taste it, they rattle off flavors of things you're never going to put in your mouth. Old leather, <laughs> wet forest that's my floor, favorite one. Uh, now, let sweaty me, horse blanket, that's a fun one. Real quick, yeah. isn't bourbon the only one that doesn't put any additives, any food coloring, anything? Like, mm. Or is that bottled in bond? So bottled in bond, you can't. Okay. Um, that comes out of the Bottled and Bond Act of 1897, where people were essentially taking grain liquor and adding in creosote food coloring and uh, yeah. brown All kinds sugar of artificial and nonsense. Calling yeah. it. <laughs> so technically, okay. you're not supposed they get to around. add okay. things, but I mean, there are like, ways. I yeah. see. Okay. When you, when you see something that's like a 99% corn and you're like, okay, how do they start the yeast? They're going to put some amino acids in there. I think amino acids, yeah, those right? Are... And it'll just start the process. And to me, that's an additive. So yeah, it's so totally. funny because you guys look at the like the ingredients. I look at the label. I'm like, oh, that's a nice label. I don't know. Oh, it must be and, good. And that like, is like judging a book is, by its cover. And that's also the, the majority <laughs> of consumer. Yeah. That's yeah. the reason why they do the label. Oh, that's, that's a fun label. I'm sure it's good. Yeah, so, that, um, that bottle looks cool. That must taste great. Yeah, or what the bottle itself. What do you like itself. to taste? Yeah. What do you mean? What, so Thank like, you. if you're going out drinking, what do you like to drink? 
Are you? Do you drink whiskey? Do you drink wine? What do you? What do I you drink, drink whiskey. I drink vodka. And I drink red wine. Okay, cool. How do um, you pick a red wine? <laughs> I always wonder that. Um, I started off when, when I was learning about wines. I started with cabernets. Sure. Okay. And then I moved on to um, Malbecs. Yeah. Merlot and. Um, then uh, we went to Italy, um, Chianti's. Nice. I like that. Um, Italian and, wine's really good. And again, yeah, I don't know much about wine, but I know but then that I like. We were in Mexico, and he taught me also about South American wines. Mm-hmm. And those are really good, like chili wines. Totally. Very good. like it. So I want to give everybody a whiskey. Let's um, go. Let's do it. You could pick any. You know, you know all these. So you could pick any one you want. Oh, I um, think we start with pick the Pick one, one for me. You want, you want to try this one? The female one. Cool. So this is female actually. One. I'm the only female. Um, Let's th- do this it. is one of my favorite whiskeys <laughs> ever to put in a tasting. This wow. Is, this is called Bren. Okay. Um, is a French single malt whiskey aged in cognac barrels. Okay. Maybe an awesome woman named Allison Park. Um, okay. It is one of my absolute favorite whiskeys to put in a tasting, and you'll see why once you taste it. So what I want you to do, I don't want you to smell this whiskey first. Okay. I want you to take a very small sip out of your glass and hold it in your mouth for about 10 seconds. Okay. It's going to heat the whiskey up and allow your body to start breaking it down and interpreting for your palate. Ooh. After those 10 seconds, I want you to start taking small swallows out of what you oh, have in your cool. mouth. It'll break down the whiskey into component flavors okay. and give your body the best chance to get at what's going on. Okay. All right. Ooh. So we'll get everybody a whiskey. And this then very helpful I, I will me. I will count for all of you so it's easy enough. Yeah, let's get Oh yeah. Make Shout sure. out Gaia from yeah. the Vegas Creative Network. Let's yeah, Gaia. Literally this whole production setup. Cool. Thank you, Gaia. Thank you. Thank you, Gaia. <laughs> and we'll say just a cheers. I, to I think Gaia. I yeah, cheers to Gaia. Thank oh wait, you. did I did I, where's my he took it. <laughs> Michael's taking everyone's glass. So, I mean, I usually am the <laughs> garbage disposal for everybody's. I'll, uh, I'll Brent it. Why not? Amazing. Okay. okay so, so remember, not, you're not going to smell it. Okay. You're going to take a small sip, okay. hold it for 10 seconds, take small swallows. Whenever you take your first small sip. I smell my food before See, I See, here's what's so funny, too. I know so many people that all they do is take shots of whiskey, uh-huh. and then they judge it based on, like, oh, that was good, or oh, that wasn't good. It's like you, so all you trip. did was take a shot. Like, so you when, you, even... when you take a shot of something, you're really, it's like shoving a whole slice of pizza in your mouth. Do you even taste it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So take your small sip, okay. I'll walk you through it. You got it. Perfect. Perfect. Hold it right up front. Two, three, four, five. Michael's already ahead of us. Yeah, Six, I'm way ahead. seven, eight, nine. <laughs> when you're ready, take your first small swallow, and you want to take a couple <laughs> swallows out of this. <laughs> you'll wow. see, you'll see I'm trying not to cough. Hell of a difference. <laughs> it makes a huge difference. That's but making you cough? So, no. <laughs> all right, we're going to practice with so, you, my here's, friend. So, but here's the really cool thing. And you can just keep pacing yourself. I did. I, Great. Okay, I just finished. Awesome. So now here's the really it's cool a part. Burn. Okay. All right. Smell that now. Oh, just now smell it. Now smell it. There's almost no burn on your nose. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. Zero. You're right. Because yeah, the burn I got that is little in our burn throat. out the way. So, yeah. by the way, there's yeah. a term for the warmth in your chest when you drink whiskey. It, does, it doesn't burn. Kentucky hug. It's, it's called hug. the Kentucky Kentucky hug. hug. So, <laughs> whiskey doesn't burn. That. It just that. hugs I real tight. About... Just hugs tight. Just hugs tight. So, now we taste it again. You don't need okay. to hold it. All the flavor rushes back without that big burn in your chest. We've essentially acclimated your body to these individual flavors. So, now it's just flavor again. And now you don't get that big kick. See wow. how do you, how do no people burn. like right. whenever people are no like hug. there's no hug yeah, whenever no you hug. taste and people are like ooh I I taste uh, you know grandma's uh, uh, blah 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 you they're know generally making it up yeah you know, I just cookies punch oatmeal them. cookies or whatever so you're like so how, yeah, how do you good. get that specific like to me I'm like ooh something a little bit sweet a little bit I mean, uh, so there's a couple ways to do can. it you can so the you the can. easy way to do it is whatever language you can use to define it okay. start there um, another way sometimes like for this one. If I was to give you tasting notes on this, personally, I get a lot of cream soda and bubblegum. Ooh, okay. I didn't get any oh, bubblegum. Yeah, I got um, a little bit of sweetness, I but got, I can't go further. I got in But I got a creaminess. Old yeah. I do have I the creaminess. Like, I can't remember what it's called. It, it came in a black, kind of like mm, a, a licorice and ice yep. flavor. It, and if you're sensitive to anise, you do get anise yeah. in that. Absolutely. So say it, anise, anise. Yeah. So it gives, I don't like, even know what that is. What's, what? Black licorice. Oh, black licorice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's, the, again, it goes back to what I was saying before about <laughs> vocabulary and language. So tasting is completely individual. What happens is we've all been to that tasting where they're like, uh, and then uh-huh. you feel dumb, yep. and they <laughs> feel smart and right. like they lord it over you, yeah. and then you go home and you bought the one that they told you was better, right? and then you feel dumb. And yeah. I, you don't like it when you right. get home. And as an educator, I don't want to do that. Yeah. What, are, what are your thoughts on like, sometimes a scotch will say like, ooh, on the nose, on the palate, on the finish. Uh, is that just, because a lot of times I feel very influenced by that, and I'm like, Okay. I, I like, think there's it seems too, suge- too subjective. It's, it's, it's definitely suggestive, um, 
but it gives you a good way to start your vocabulary. I agree. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I think ta- I think taking yeah. them at face value was tough because again, like bringing up scotch, like a very common uh, flavor in scotch you're going to hear a lot is heather. Mm. Who's that? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So they'll use language about stuff that goes way over your goes way over your head. Um, I love scotch. Let me be very upfront. I love scotch. I, I love I love heavily, learning scotch. I love so. heavily peated scotch. Yes, we got Lagavulin. Yeah. Great whiskey. Mom, mom uh, it's, you either love it or hate it, that it, one. It's exactly. like a campfire. But yeah, the, I like it, But though. the number one descriptive flavor in our industry for that style of whiskey okay. is used Band-Aids. Ooh. That's true. I have a very yeah. low bar for friendship. If you know what used Band-Aid tastes like, you're beneath That's the what bar. I'm saying. Yeah, what? That's <laughs> disgusting. Come on, you guys didn't. Chew on your band aids when you were kids. No. <laughs> if I did, and I don't remember. <laughs> no. I just remember my childhood. That's how he developed his palate. So <laughs> right. So <laughs> it, let me let me say how I. All I right, do it's a guy taste. thing. Yes. Yeah, Us girls here. don't chew on our band aids. <laughs> so <laughs> this is my philosophy. I like it, and I think a broad majority of my fans would like it. That's it for me. Yep. Then I hand it off to my friend Andrew or my friend Shannon, and they will write their tasting notes down. And it's always strange that what tasting notes that I have in my head and I can't get out, those two will have very similar tasting notes, and that's what the consumer wants to read. But it could have simply been, well, excuse the smell. (laughs) I like I like his way now. <laughs> it could be just a taste, and I'm like, I don't like it, and that's it. I'm done, and I'm moving on to the next pick because mm-hmm. my goal is picking barrels right now until I can get my brand launched, and then blending. I can taste four or five different things and say, okay, I think I'm going to get the profile that I like by blending 30% of that one, 20% of that one, and whatever's left, and blend it together. And then whoever's with me are like, my God, how did you do that? And I'm like, it's only taste for me. So that's how I do it. We all live in Vegas, Vice City. Every vice is at your fingertips. The, the good ones and the bad ones and all everything in between. I mean, that's a moral question, you know? not an sure. ethical question. <laughs> it's all, yeah. Well, like, for instance, I know a guy that was like, I don't I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't oh, gamble, I don't okay. chase There's women, but that. food got sure. me. He's like, this is a foodie town, yeah, and yeah. steaks it took me down. Is. Totally. You know, so, like, we're in Sin City, and then we're also in the liquor business, of all things. How do we keep a, a good head on our shoulders? How do you... Don't uh, not fall prey to you know like the serious sides of alcoholism and all the all the 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 not so fun side of of all these fun bottles out here. Do you, I, do you want to go first? I'm <laughs> lucky because I I do have an obsessive compulsive personality on I spend money on buying things, but when it comes to addiction, I don't have that addiction gene, which I'm lucky because. <laughs> My real father was, and still is at like 88 years old, an alcoholic. So now his Christmas presents are non-alcoholic whiskeys. And he's like, okay, something's weird about this, but it tastes like whiskey. (laughs) Uh, So I don't have that addictive personality for alcohol or drugs. uh, So I'm lucked out. But for the percentage of the population that does, if they are in the alcohol business or my former like 20 years was in hospitality if you're a bartender and you're an alcoholic they are not good careers to be in so taught college for what seven years i think in the hospitality programs and then hr you know i'm giving advice to everybody if we catch up on that we're going to try to get them help if you're an alcoholic you don't want to be in this industry and i'm not going to say that i haven't gone to professional meetings where everybody's drinking and had too much and had to be driven home by a friend or might sleep in the car for a few hours. <laughs> but that is a rare occasion for me, like usually twice a year. Where, so, yeah. JD, how about you? Uh, I have fallen victim to the uh, the downsides of drinking for okay. a living. Um, I've had my brushes with the law about it, uh, um, wow. which I'm more than open to you know, admitting that mistakes were made. And so 
especially as, as there's a... There's nothing wrong with and making And there's absolutely not. And, mm -hmm. and it's learning from those mistakes that make the difference, yeah. especially as a younger bartender, when you're fresh you, in this industry. Truth. Mm -hmm. And the opportunities are there to not only drink, but drink in excess and uh -huh. also oftentimes drink in excess for free. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um, this industry is amazing. I've been in it. I moved to Vegas in 2008 to study hospitality, and then I got a job the day I graduated college, and I'm still doing that job today. <laughs> so I'm a firm supporter and believer in the industry. Oftentimes, though, you know, I'm very fortunate. I get to get I get to drink some very, very expensive, very, very high end alcohol on someone, nice part of on someone industry, else's dime. <laughs> yep. But, you know, when you're 22, 23, 24, you're getting your first bartending jobs, you're able to, you know, oh, I worked at my bar. I have my post shift drink and then I go out to a sister bar and they know me from this place and then all my drinks are free. And then you mix in gambling and then, you oh, know, God, yeah. you, you know, oh, now I get to drink for free because I'm gaming. And then <laughs> they then we go do this and you do that. It, it creates a habit that is very hard to break. And that's why you will see bartenders bartend in Vegas from the time they're 22 until they're dead yeah, yeah wow because they get stuck that's there's mm -hmm. there's that side to it as well because it, it does create a lifestyle that doesn't necessarily provide a good healthy work-life balance because if you work in the booze business and then you relax in the booze business and then you go home and you consume more booze that you got from the booze but it just it le it's, a, it's a vicious Constantly cycle. Constantly perpetuates, yeah. It, yeah. It, over, it's a vicious, right? vicious yeah. cycle. I come from the comedy world where same thing. It was like, not only would they give you a drink because they see, oh, he's nervous. Maybe take a shot of this before oh, yeah, you go yeah. on stage. But then, oh, man, now you're really funny. And then, oh, man, I need to take a shot every time I go on stage. Mm -hmm. There's those people that fall prey to that. And then, of course, like you said, you get paid in alcohol a lot of the time. Yeah, a do. lot of the time. It's like, yeah, we're not going to pay you cash, but, hey, you want, like, you know, a $100 bar tab, bring some friends. Right. And it's like, you know, when you're 23, you're like, wow, this is. Oh, yeah, my 20s were a different world. Yeah. I was. <laughs> I was the designated drunk driver home because I was muscular, big. I could drink. Definitely, I was way past the alcohol limit. But my friends were, like, passed out. And I'm like, hey, how is everybody? I could get pulled over and not a thing. Yep. Yeah. Never got a ticket. Well, a speeding ticket once. And like you <laughs> said, Michael, I do think it's, like, it's a gene thing too. It like is I, a gene I feel thing. lucky that mm -hmm. like I don't have that. Like, oh my god, I have to have more now. Oh, like yeah. there, there's it's some there's some thing. people that just have to. And I think they you can correct me, but something about like they you know you're an alcoholic because you don't you don't really care. Like you'll drink a warm beer. Like you'll like you'll as long as alcohol's in front of you, you'll drink it. Whereas we're kind of being kind of sore about it. We're doing like that difference fancy taste testing. Needing it. You need the mm -hmm. alcohol to survive every day. Where, yeah. Yeah. where in my life, it's like, oh, I want to drink. It's like an enjoyment. Drink. Yeah. 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 When uh, growing up, I had very uh, supportive parents, and you know, I got to live a very, uh, we'll say, active youth life, and got to have fun parties and things. But my my mother always said to me, if you come to me and say you want a drink. I will happily have a drink with you. Yeah. But the second you come to me and say, Mom, I need a drink, you're yeah, going to rehab. There's there a we problem. Go. Yeah. So I remember when I was bartending, I probably worked a 16, 17 hour shift. Wow. Absolutely exhausted. I got home. It's probably three or four in the morning. I was stressed. I was mad. Just every every bad thing that could happen in the bartending day just happened. And I got home and I grabbed one of these and I grabbed a whiskey and I just was like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Let's just let's just do 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 do. And I put it down in front of me, and I realized, oh, this is a moment I need a drink, not want a Ooh, drink. Okay. And I sat there and I stared at it, and I went, "Well, you that chug that." We're that's good. the, <laughs> and I went, I went, that's the pebble. Like this is the pebble that starts the this avalanche. Is how it starts, yeah. Of becoming an actual problem drinker, and I poured it back in the bottle. Yeah. Because wow. it, having the self awareness, and that's the other thing too. It's, it's, it's also a maturity thing, you know. Not just bartending, but bartending in Vegas. Mm -hmm. This is a playground. It's an adult's playground. You know, you travel around the country, they don't have nearly the same kind of bar culture that we do. And our bar culture is great. We have some of the coolest bars, some of the best mixology, some of the coolest whiskey bars, wine bars, tequila bars, cigar bars, everything. Except what that allows for is for you to fall into these traps mm -hmm. and stay in it. But then you get to have, on the other side of that coin, you get to have people like Michael, who has these awesome barrel picks that he gets to do, which are super unique and 
as in from an education perspective, especially as you guys are new to tasting Ooh, different yeah. things. This is where I think we should go next for some of these. I'd love for you to yeah, let's, walk let's through some of these. Roll, yeah. I think after yours. <laughs> you poured a stiff one with the strongest <laughs> one, too, with the 115 yeah. proof. Well, that's, <laughs> it's medicine. It's prohibition style. That's a fun story in itself, how some of these whiskey brands during prohibition got around prohibition by making it <laughs> medicinal so whiskey. There that's were, amazing. There were eight distilleries that stayed open this during is prohibition. My, this, is for, this is old like me. It's... I'm oh, yeah. it's oh, way older. Sure. It's way older than you. I know, but this is what I <laughs> Ma, grew up with. You're not with. old. Don't worry. Uh, so I grew old, up with that. Mother just turned 21. This is her 21st birthday party. <laughs> so old Forrester. <laughs> it is a party for me. Yes. Old Forrester is the only whiskey brand open before, during, and after Prohibition wow. that still exists in its original form and still family owned. Yeah, fantastic. So wow. it is cool. It is but pretty cool. I can't wait for you guys to try this. I tried this two weeks ago, or this well, this, this, sort co- of tried this it. company two weeks ago. It's awesome. <laughs> How do we pronounce this one? Botka. Botka. Bok- Bakta. 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 That's Bakta. cool. So, oh. where does where does the name come from? Where, well, where? Okay, that's that's a good question. So, uh, if anybody remembers a uh, breakthrough rye brand from oh gosh, this would have been almost twenty years ago. That's okay. We won't. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe JD. JD. You will. Being, prof, you I'm going to call you Professor JD. You hear, <laughs> I feel like I'm in oh, class. Adam will love that. Did you ever hear of a brand called Whistlepig? Of yes, course. of course. Okay, not of course, but yes. So, um, after Poor Raj uh, had investors, and I will never take investors that have a percentage of my company ever. Uh, after reading all these stories, Steve Jobs, Raj Botka, um, mm. they can push you out of your company if you write yeah. the agreement incorrectly. Oh wow! Uh, poor Raj, whether you love him or not, um, he wrote his operation and investment agreement with them incorrectly. So uh, after Raj finally decided to leave um, Whistle Pig, uh, some people can say forced out, whatever. I don't agree with that, but um, he's definitely a different guy than the playboy that we know from his running for Congress and Whistle Pig guys, and I really respect him a lot. But this is... His company. It's a beautiful bottle too. I love it. Yeah, amazing. So this is uh, after modeled after uh, the Art Deco period. Uh, the Chrysler Building was the um, the model for it. But you know, I, I talk a lot. But let's just talk about vodka. <laughs> it's one of my favorite brands. Um, as soon as as soon as they got mentioned, I, and I think it was Men's Magazine or GQ, I I started buying uh, off their website and buying their stuff because. They weren't widely distributed, so the direct-to-consumer mm-hmm. way is the way I'm going to do it, uh, too. But this is a Bakta 1928, so it is a MGP rye base, uh, which MGP is one of my favorite distillers. Let's put a little plug Midwest in for Midwest grain product. Did I get it right? It's pretty, uh, I think it's pretty, pretty close. close. Pretty close, yeah. Close. We're just going to say MGP because it's so much easier. <laughs> From uh, what we were talking about earlier before we recorded, Indiana stuff. and Kentucky. and oh, yeah. yeah, so Indiana produces an obscene amount of the whiskey in the United States. 100%. Like, if it's not Jack Daniels, it's not Jim Beam, it probably came out of Indiana. We'll kind of you guys th- That kind of amount. Um, MGP is the primary distiller. It's in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. It's within southern Indiana. Wow. Um, you'll hear oftentimes that Kentucky makes the best corn. It all comes from Indiana. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. They also... Um, have the same uh, limestone water aquifer okay. uh, underneath. So when these purists will tell you, oh, no, it's got to be from Kentucky because of the limestone water. Well, guess what? It's Gaia, the cheers. same water. And I must have asked Gaia 10 million times. Are we cheers, recording? Guy. Are we recording? <laughs> 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 so um, what vodka has allowed you to do with this brand? Uh, Raj went over to France. He was touring the world. He... Is in he's in some kind of convertible car, drives up, finds this uh, Armagnac estate, wow. and just asks for the owners. And I don't know the whole story, uh, but he bought it, and it had Armagnac back from the early eighteen late eighteen hundreds or so, a whole way up through I don't know the nineteen nineties. And uh, so if you're not familiar, it. Armagnac is Cognac's cooler cousin. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Armagnac, no additives. Cognac, additives like a motherfucker. Yeah. So I don't, I, sometimes I like Cognac, but Armagnac is 
perfect. And they make this in Romania too. They call it, um, I don't even remember. Who cares? Anyway, so. <laughs> what is it, rakia? <laughs> like everybody else? Yeah. Soika, soika, palinka, I don't know. Oh, I love palinka. That's yeah, a, oh, too. I love, oh. oh, you need to come over. Um, so, it's MGP rye. Calvados. Which is pear brandy, if you pear guys don't brandy. know. Pear brandy. Apple brandy. Or both. Yeah, it can be both. Yeah. They, they use an apple brandy. Oh, one. do they? Oh, yep. cool. Nice. And then the next 10% is finished Armagnac. So with this blend uh, for the 1928 blend, they use probably like 40 different Armagnacs to get their shelf blend. But what you can do is you can go up to their campus in Vermont and do a single barrel blend, well, a single bonbon blend. And uh, this is actually batch two of mine. You get 72 bottles in, in, a, in a bonbon. Uh, my first one sold out pretty quickly. And then, so I got a lot of people in wanting a, a second one. Um, That's so, awesome. So I blended it, and I came up with, I put in 3.3% of 1973 Armagnac from Botka, and that was their 2023 named Best Spirit in the World. Wow. Uh, I then ended up putting in a 1989 and a 1996, and... Unbeknownst to me, as I started like figuring things out, 1989 was the first time I became a volunteer firefighter. I was 14 years old, um, and that that goes into a whole different segue on my uh, my charity and nonprofit. And then 1996 happened to be the year I turned 21. So blended those together. Um, Botka was in town last week or a week and a half ago for the nth, um, and. I spent a whole weekend with them golfing up in Utah and then oh. finishing up with the nth. And then at the end of the nth, we, we drank their, what, $20,000 bottle. Wow. $20,000 bottle? Yeah, $20,000 wow. bottle of wow. like 1882 Armagnac. From yeah. 1882? Yeah, but this is my blend. Well, cheers so, to that. And wow. it has, uh, remember how to drink this? Yes. Same. Look at it. Smell no, it. No, yep. look, no, 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 yep. no. exactly right. Look, no, smell, smell, taste. <laughs> we're we're gonna you we're gonna put it in your mouth. You we're gonna hold put it on in your mouth. And yes. Hold it. Yes. Uh, the, hold the, 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 the so don't smell it. Hold okay. it for about ten seconds. Take, take small swallows. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Cheers. Cheers, you guys. These Bacto whiskeys are so good. Man, my lips are chapped, so it's like extra burn. Yeah. So that's the rye. Okay. And my profile that I like is. Usually sweet and spicy. <laughs> little hug, a little tight. Yeah, yeah. That was a, that was hug? a Kentucky hug. Did this that one hug you? Yeah. It did. It's did a you good get one. the sweetness out of it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, is that is that, a, right. is that a thing that's unique to rye though? I, I again, here's what I think mm. I know. I yeah. think I think I know rye is more uh, bitter, maybe more spice heavy. Definitely it's more spice heavy. Definitely okay. spice spice heavy. So rye whiskey will oftentimes come across in your palate the way spicy food does. It'll give you that kind of tongue tingly kind of note to it. That's what it is. Um, oh, is so I definitely get the sweetness on that. The finish is all of that apple brandy for Isn't me. It? For now, me. the second sip, much sweeter. Yeah. No so apple. essentially, with this methodology I'm, that I was showing you guys, it's called C stem. So the Karmer Spirits Tasting Enhancement Method. Mm. So C-STEM, um, what you're doing with that first part is you're getting your body calibrated okay. to the to the spirit. Uh -huh. And then the second taste is when you're actually getting at it. Yeah. So that's okay. why that second taste, all of a sudden, you don't get that big bite down your chest. You're, you're able over to the pull burn. Over. You're absolutely and right. Because that first time, especially for you guys who are not used to drinking whiskey yeah. neat, Mm -hmm. It's tough, but that second time you're like, oh, I get yes. this. Guy. Yeah, I like the second starting to get time a little better. bit of hair on my chest, starting to feel like a tough guy. Yeah, there you go. The hair. There you go. <laughs> so, um, I think this is a good little segue because it, yeah, it when we have Armagnac and and whiskey going, uh, so I brought a couple of cigars. Love if you guys want to light I some agree. cigars Love up? It. So I want to do. You know, we were talking about some uh, base, very basics of cigars. If you want to be a cigar smoker, there is one big point of etiquette. <laughs> no, mom, you're not getting a shot. <laughs> I it's mean, a cigar. You shoot I, it if you like how... I will try it. <laughs> so the, Just don't inhale. So the, bi the like big Bill thing Clinton. is, don't um, <laughs> um, with a cigar, if you want to feel like not really like a mooch, okay. make sure you have a lighter ah, um, or point. some way to light it. Um, now, I brought... I feel like JD said that because I was like, JD, I don't have a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> you did offer to get one, though. You did offer. So well, I don't. Here's the thing. I, don't, I think there's a certain type of lighter that you're supposed to have with so, a cigar. Uh, so that's a great question. Sort of. So kind of. 
be sure. So there's 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 three different ways to light a cigar. There's the you know you hear the the wood match thing. Okay, that's fine. Nothing wrong with the wood match. It's gonna I take like ten minutes. Okay. Um, pe- people will think that you know a wood match will be the more natural way to do it. Um, then you get into what are called torches. Ooh, okay. So like I have a I few like I, I have a few different torches with me. So like this is one torch that I have from uh, Romeo and Julieta. And it's a it's a three torch. Wait, so you pronounce it Romeo and Julieta? Julieta? Oh, I've definitely not been pronouncing it that. What, what do you what are you calling it? Just, Romeo, Romeo, Romeo and Julieta? Yeah, like the movie. <laughs> like the okay. <laughs> yeah. So th- this is a three uh, prong uh, torch. That's beautiful. Um, That's cool. Then this is a electric lighter. Okay. Ooh, so like instead that. of having a striker. Like the traditional, you have to like, like charge it, like uh, a yeah, USB no, cord. Yeah, they have a USB no on the bottom. Kidding. Yep, no wow. kidding. Uh, so this thing, as soon as I open the cap, the uh, gas is going, and then I have an electric button. Okay. Oh, I like that. Okay. Um, what are the ones that are like clear? Yeah. Like you don't see anything, but then what, you only see it when you're lighting it. Yep. Um, that's, that's just kind of gimmick. It's, yeah, it's it's very high, very hot. Okay. And then there's also I've got this one too, which is a nice little single, uh, single Beautiful. flame. Those are fun. So a torch. Yeah, I like that case. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so this is from Oliva Cigars. Um, I did an event with them a couple weeks ago. So those nice. are like you. Those are specific for cigars. Like no cigarette smoker is using those, so right? Here's Unless the, they just. So here's the issue with this in a cigarette. <laughs> These are very hot. Okay. So you if you got a cigarette here gone. and you're doing this, uh, you're it gonna... just burn off your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> so and I just watched someone try to do it with this the other day, and it was oh, no. very funny. Nice. So <laughs> with your cigars. Um, <laughs> so I gave I gave both you guys a a, a Trinidad Espiritu number no. three is Beautiful. the cigar you guys have. Okay. I've got an El Septimo is the one I have. So um, the first decision you have to make is how you want to cut it. Mm. So there are three different cuts essentially for a cigar. Um, people will tell you you can bite your cigars, which you can if you mm. want to get tobacco in your mouth. Um, if you want to be really cool, a lot of guys will just pinch it and like break the cap. Okay. So the end of your cigar. Um, the butt of your cigar mm-hmm. is what's called the cap. Okay. So that's little, that, like, right. there's like a little line. Exactly. Goes, that's okay. the part you want to cut. Okay. So the first way you can do it is what's called a punch. So a lot of torches will have a, a literally, it's called oh, a punch that's cut. beautiful. And it's a little circle and you I like punch, that. punch it through. I'm a punch guy. You're a punch guy? Do you guy? make those, JD? I feel like you need to start selling merch, start <laughs> making your own stuff. I, I do not have I'm, any of my I'm own uh, cigar customer. stuff. I want one. Okay. Can I um, ask a silly question? No How such come, thing. like, uh, you know, in the movies, they're always like this? Like, so I know they do that. that okay, so there's yeah. th- so when you're making a cigar, there's three different like physical parts to your cigar in terms of the tobacco. Okay. So the outside part is called your wrapper. Okay. Then the inside underneath your wrapper is called the binder. Okay. And then the majority of the tobacco, this is called the filler. Okay. So that when they're doing, mm. that's it's it's no different than swirling your glass of wine and sticking your nose in it. Like what am I? Lo- <laughs> what are we looking for? So much like with whiskey, because it's definitely tobacco. There's definitely tobacco. <laughs> um, it smells like a leather belt. So I, uh, <laughs> so I am the, sp- <laughs> I'm the spirits and events consultant for a new lounge here in town. It's called Smoke Cigar Lounge. Amazing. It's um in Mountains Edge. I've just heard opened amazing up. Amazing things about. Just the opened place. up about six months ago. It was already named a top ten cigar bar in America by the Premium Cigar Association. Wow. Fantastic. Wow. Um, largest walk in humidor in Vegas. Wow. Uh, female owned, veteran owned, minority owned, awesome space. I knew about this much about cigars before it opened. I know now about that much about cigars. Fantastic. <laughs> um, the owner is a cigar sommelier. Oh, wow. uh, they also, oh I love that. They also have a de- like three other dedicated cigar sommeliers wow. on staff. So when you go in there, you can wow. tell them, I know nothing. Or I know they everything, know everything. Wow. and they will guide you through it. So That's a lot awesome. of cool. so a lot of what I know, I have learned from just sitting there with them, uh, talking and drinking and smoking. Um, I over the last uh, about five months, we've been hosting a monthly uh, cigar and spirits pairing. Wow. Um, so our next one's on May fourteenth. Um, oh, I doing, need to, I need to come. That's yeah, awesome. it's, uh, we're doing a uh, crowned head cigars and um, Tennessee whiskeys. So with wow. this, because um, I want to get you guys oh, lit. I love that. Alrighty. So. Um, <laughs> I'll let you guys kind of pick whichever lighter you want. Um, I would use one of those two more than this one. Uh, it's a little easier. Okay. Um, I need. So, I think I need to do the pun- what yeah, was so, it? Oh, punch. Yeah. Oh yeah. The other thing. So you can either do a punch. We also yeah, have yeah. Um, what's called a V cut. Okay. So that's gonna cut literally a V into the cap of your cigar. Okay. Is or that you just have a, for like aesthetics, or is, um, that, is there a purpose? Mm, like, it, it's a different. It's a different draw. 
Okay. So as you pull it in, and there's also what's called a flat cut, which is the traditional yep, I'm like used to that. Or you know, those get, are the ones that get are... getting a brisk cut, as I, as I like to say. <laughs> um, so it's completely up to you. Um, <laughs> Shoot, you know what? I'll try the V cut. That seems fun. Okay. So never... so here's your V cut. So you're gonna stick the the cap of your cigar on that side, right here. Yep, right in the middle. Okay. And then you're just gonna use your fingers and pinch it together. Other, yeah, there you go. Perfect. There you okay. go. Here we yep. go. All right, and just make sure it's only hitting yep, that that's, line. Yep. Just, yep. Okay. That's it. Look at the right. Oh, made. that's beautiful. I don't know if the camera can see that. That's yeah, awesome. So, so a V cut oh, is so cool. typically I've never seen that before. how I like to smoke my, you uh, cut my, my cigars. The cigar I had actually had a pointed uh, cap. And because of a pointed cap, you can't okay. really V cut this. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I have to flat cut that. Okay. Oh, okay. So some cigars, it just depends on yeah. what the actual like shape of your cigar is will affect what the cut is. Okay. So the next thing you're going to want to do um, when you go to light this is you're going to toast the butt of your cigar so the front part like where the where you're gonna light yep you want to toast that part and it kind of like binds in uh the tobacco okay and then you're gonna do your traditional puff and pull oh not a big difference and when you get a nice you know round ember all the way around you're set now, one of the things that uh, a lot of newer cigar smokers mm -hmm. go through they, and they get frustrated with is uh, their cigar goes out mm -hmm. and they got to relight it. I've had that happen. Yep. We all have. Mm -hmm. uh, good friend of mine. And why does that happen? Uh, honestly, you're not smoking your cigar, like, correctly? Con not correctly, consistently enough. But the way we like to describe it is if your cigar goes out and you have to relight it, it's just a sign of a good conversation. Mm, okay, that's Very a good nice. way to put that's it. That's a nice way to put it. So when you're smoking your cigar, much like with whiskey, mm -hmm. um, there's different flavor notes to it. You are more than welcome as you puff on these to try to describe uh, the flavors. Okay. Um, I'm very bad at pulling flavors out of cigars. Me too. Um, I mean, there's definitely tobacco. I don't know if. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, getting, that's like, like, I'm getting like what, what other leather? Yeah. Is there any apple? But I think there's like there's like darker heather? darker cigars, lighter yep. smokes. So these so They're heavy heavier. heavy Chocolate. light. So, all, so all of the cigars that we're smoking right now are called Maduros, and Which that is, has to do with the color of the wrapper. Okay. Um, but as you smoke your three cigars, the flavor actually is divided into thirds. So your first third of your cigar has one set of flavors. The okay. middle third has another set of flavors, and your last third has another set of flavors. Okay. So as you, when you're judging cigars, that is part of it. Is you know, at what point are you, uh, are you are you at in your cigar smoking? Okay. Now another thing, cigars are not like cigarettes. You don't need to burn it all the way down to here. Mm -hmm. You want to smoke a cigar about three quarters of the way through. So uh, generally, to the it, wrapper, uh, you could go a little further past the wrapper because you know some people, some cigars wrappers now are like up to here. Oh, okay. I've got some cigars where like the wrapper's like three quarters yeah. of the cigar, but about a quarter of what's left when you get down to that point, that's when okay. you can just put your cigar down and let it naturally burn itself out. Hmm. It's just better etiquette that way. Okay. Um, but again, you know we're outside. It's a beautiful night in Vegas. Smoke away. Smoke away. But is the weather not perfect right it now? It is. A it's a wonderful man. night. I love the nighttime. It's right a now. wonderful night. And you know when you're drinking this and super drinking this super cool stuff. stuff, and this box is so good. It was um, really good. I drank I, it very fast. I think. I mean, I think this <laughs> one, finished. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Take a Heck small yeah. sip. I'm like, oh, I think I'm already halfway. I'm thinking this would be another <laughs> double gold winner if we submitted it. Yeah, to New York. Um, nice I will say it. this. I have seen this on the internet it. a lot, Michael. This one with the pear. Mm. I'm very intrigued by it. And again, again, I'm going for the label. I'm like, that's a fun so, label. So I don't know how if you feel about this. Um, at, so with barrel picks and private bottlings like this, okay, one, one of the funnest parts about it when you're the one making the bottles is designing the label. Yeah. Because yeah. we're able to create the silliest things possible. Mm -hmm. So I've got one that I did with our, with our friend uh, Mary from Whiskey Slickers. Yeah. And the bottle uh, is literally called Paint Me Like One of Your Trash Pandas. <laughs> and it's a picture of a raccoon lounging on a chair and then Aww. another raccoon drawing it like it. Rose from Titanic. Oh, that's oh, cool. And, that's... And the oh, I love that. And the bottle's literally paint like one of your trash pandas. And I, I mean... Am I supposed to, real quick question, am yeah. I supposed to like ash it or I, wait so, till it falls off? Because um, I've heard... Mix of both. Okay. So you can ash it. That's not ready to ash yet. Mm -hmm. Um... So one of the indicators of a really good cigar okay. is how long the ash naturally holds. Oh. Um, so 
uh, on the 21st of June, we're actually doing a long ash competition. What? So a long ash competition is you oh, smoke your fun. cigar as evenly and slowly or as quickly as you need to to get the ash as far down as you possibly can. Wow. I, okay. I Challenge took, accepted. I took second to <laughs> the last one I did, and it is brutal. <laughs> like, if you have shaky hands at all, you are not going to have a good time. <laughs> no, you're going to show up. The guy who won, I kid you not, got down pretty much like on this size cigar to about here. So this was all ash. Holding wow. together the entire way up. This I is mean, a really good do they cigar. Have to hold it vertically. Or? So the way you do it is you literally sit there like this. Oh. <laughs> is there is there a region that is known for like I mean I guess the Cuban cigar right like I what was going to ask about yeah, so you know what I mean? what's the so, difference why were people so, it's a, so crazy so, over it? so it's a great it was question so here? so um, Cuba was kind of the one of the forefronts of cigars so tobacco you know has been consumed here in North America for. Thousands and thousands of years. Mm-hmm. Um, we have evidence of it here in the in the Southwest. Um, wild tobacco is going back several thousand years. Uh, there's actually one of the regulars at the at Smoke is an anthropologist and archaeologist, and he's doing That's research amazing. on wow. ancient tobaccos. Oh, hmm. So Christopher great. Columbus is the one who kind of found tobacco and then brought it back to Europe, and then it kind of spread wow. through that. Um, so Cuba was a huge tobacco grower. Uh, as a colony, and then it, over time, uh, then we've had the embargo since the 50s, which has created the level of mystique around mm. it. Okay. So that's why you'll hear about like pre-embargo cigars and stuff like that, and you'll still have this Cuban mystique around it. And there are some Cuban cigars that are very, very, very good. It's almost like allocated whiskey. It's, it's oh, I very, want it more because it's hard very to get. much so, very much so. But then, so like right now, a lot of great tobacco coming out of Nicaragua, out of the Dominican. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, what are called Mexican San Andreas wrapped cigars, so it's actually Mexican tobacco. Um, they make great tobacco out of Connecticut, Brazil. Um, uh, so like whiskey. It's completely everywhere. 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 Now, mind okay. you, there are some places that just have a better climate, and the people who make the cigars there do a better job, sure. just like with whiskey. You know, I'm not going to talk negatively on anybody, but. There are countries that I'm sure I can name for whiskey production that uh, have lower quality than others. They might make a ton of whiskey, doesn't make it good. So there, there are certain cigars that are made with majority tobaccos from certain countries that I am not personally a fan of. But just like with whiskey or wine or whatever, mm-hmm. what All I, personal preference, exactly. Objective. What yeah. I like is not what you like is not what you like. Right. Quality is objective. Taste is subjective. Mm -hmm. So there is such a thing as this is a perfectly made cigar. It is high quality tobacco. Well, very good. Same thing with whiskey. Well made, everything structured. It's not my flavor, but okay, it's well made. I see. Um, I feel like it's you simplify it to do I like it or do I not like it? Exactly. And that's and and that's what matters. And at the end of the day, like I said about whiskey at the beginning, that's where you start. Do you like it? And the beauty is with cigars. And I still feel this way a lot of the time, and I smoke, I'm a two to four cigar a day smoker. No kidding. Yeah. Well, yeah. call me, JD. I'm yeah. like call some time. two to four a year. <laughs> yeah, and I smoke two. This is my third today. Um, Cheers on that. But uh, <laughs> um, I find that the more I smoke, I still think that uh, 99 times out of 100, it's, oh, this is a cigar. Cool. Uh-huh. And it's like, uh-huh. you have, I, I have a window of about this much yeah. above and below. Yeah. Of like, oh, it's a better cigar. It's a less better cigar. Ooh, that's okay. about it. Sure. And every now and then, I get one that's really good. Which is probably how you started with whiskey, right? And then you tried more and more and more so, to where now you're, you know, so you're, in a, you're literally the professor. Pre, pre, <laughs> pre, my work uh, in whiskey, Shoot, I, have I to was give up one of my screen names for. Him. <laughs> I was a, uh, I was a Jack Daniels drinker. Mm. I'm still a Jack Daniels drinker. Yeah, I mean, hey, tennis. Uh, my mom's from Memphis. Yeah, that was Jack probably the first. Yes, that's what I started with. Shout out to <laughs> my my parents' liquor cabinet. I that was the first. <laughs> we had a full one. The we first did. whiskey. I'm like, you know, you know, high school. Oh, hey, parents are asleep. Let's let's, let's keep, go in there. Right, let's, let's see what's going on. Let, to keep them out of it. Masking. <laughs> we used to masking. Put the masking tape yeah, around yeah. The, the top of the bottle. Yeah, we would peel so it they, off and then put it back so on. So they couldn't get it. We thought they <laughs> yeah. couldn't get into it. Right? It doesn't work. <laughs> no. Do you remember what your first drink was? I'm pretty sure it was a oh, first drink. Yeah, first first alcoholic beverage. Oh, I Tom do. Collins. 
for him or for you? For me. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> wow. For me, first it's a classy drink. Classy drink. I like it. Was a vodka that a friend got because you know he found he he had an older brother who had a friend that who could score it? some who? alcohol. I gotta know who? Oh, Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> oh, we know Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and. He has a PhD did it today. didn't know yeah he's a PhD now he, he made it he did a good he did it in oh physics my. he did it but yeah you didn't know how much was too much so oh that was that's a funny story because I was working for my dad that summer we caught and that. Uh, <laughs> my dad my dad leaves Wait till I tell you when I leaves for work drink. leaves for work at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. and I'm throwing up <laughs> <laughs> and he's a tough guy dad he's like get in the car I throw up in the car you're cleaning that up like <laughs> I'm throwing up again while throwing up my or while cleaning up my vomit and uh, you know and I probably didn't drink again for like five years okay <laughs> like but then I you know we discovered the, the, the liquor cabinet tried to be uh, cool. A little more fancy about it, but still didn't really know anything. Michael, how about you? What was your, what was your first drink? All right, this is a hilarious story. So first, how old were you? Probably eighteen months old. <laughs> no way! Well, that's no bad. way! You're eighteen this story, months this makes old. This story sad. Yep. <laughs> Mama fed you a. a I shouldn't drink. laugh. No. So I can remember memories back to about twelve months to eighteen months just before my grandfather died. Oh. And I can't remember yesterday. <laughs> I can't <laughs> now. Now I can't remember yesterday, and that's something. That's I'm, because you I'm don't want to. With. Real quick, before but, we uh, before oh, yeah. we get really, um, I, I want, you know, we're, we're already there. <laughs> <laughs> While you tell your story, Michael, will you yeah. would you like to pick out something? It's JD's turn. Mm. So that means I have to. Okay, finish. JD picks out while you. Okay, keep going, Michael. Sorry. Uh, so I want to taste My milk. earliest memories are with my grandfather, who probably passed away when I was three, and I have a lot of memories about him, which is unusual. It's amazing. Um, That's awesome. So yeah, we lived in this old coal mining town in an old coal mining house in the foothills of the Appalachia. So I pretty wow. much grew up in the mountains. Poor, white trash. Use that term. That's what and they called it back then. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no offense, so, but yeah. no, no offense. We, it's we wrong are. side of the tracks. Use the PC language. Hey, Dolly yeah. Parton came from that. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, the coal miner's daughter. Exactly. So, you know, it was the foothills of the Appalachians in Pennsylvania, or the Alleghenies mm-hmm. near the Monongahela, hence mm-hmm. where well, the rye, where the rye is coming from for me. Um, so my grandfather used to give me like he would drink a beer and fill the cap up. Oh, and I'd sit some. there and sip the cap with him. Oh. And as an 18-month-old, the cap <laughs> was a lot of and alcohol. he remembers this at a year. And, and I can remember it plain as day in the garage. And uh, I think my first drink was, so I'll, I'll use my Pittsburghese, Iron City Light. Nice. So I'm, I'm from Pittsburgh. I'm a Yinzer. Uh, so sometimes I talk and people just... What, what are you, you talking about? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was my first one. And I don't have a affinity for beer. I don't like the taste of beer. I don't like the taste of most wines or most beers. But I like I like fruit beers. And then I like stouts. Mm-hmm. But that IPA and all that fancy stuff in the middle that has gone with the brewery stuff, I, mm-hmm. I just don't have a care for. And then, apparently, that's a genetic thing. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, I can but, appreciate a very ice cold beer on a hot day. Yeah, an ice cold beer, I think you can do it. But again, I spent a lot of time in visiting Europe, and they drink their beer warm, so it's a very oh, interesting. Wow. Only well, America does everything cold. It's, it's, really? it's, yeah. beer? it's, it's wow. not warm. They don't even it's just have not ice. cold. It's not. But cold. they don't yeah. use yeah. ice like yeah, we use ice. Right. Oh yeah, they don't use ice in anything. No, yeah, they don't, don't do that. Coca Cola. I'm like, uh, mm-hmm. can I have like six glasses? No, they of put ice? a two liter like, bottle on the a, table and you drink all your sodas warm. It's a yeah, waste yeah. of water, right? Is that how right? they? Or so they just don't. Think? It's just like they don't have air conditioning. No, it's also oh, not my. healthy no for the body to have ice cold. They believe. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what they say. Yeah. Um, but I like ice. Before so we, I do too. before we wrap it up, yeah. um, what are we? What are we so just? Wait a minute, we can't wrap it up. We're not done. <laughs> this, <laughs> might, this, this might. Mama have to needs be, another drink. This, is, this might have to be a part Every time one, mom comes to Vegas, she's like, uh uh-huh. two. We're still well, partying. We need plus, more. Keep going. Plus, we need one more whiskey after this one because Michael See? has a special Love one that we should have needed to drink. I knew I liked these guys for a reason. Fantastic. So this one we're tasting on right now is a whiskey out of Indiana. Like we were talking about before. So this is called Redemption. Redemption. It's a rye whiskey aged in rum casks. So what this is, is a, there's a a thing in whiskey called finishing. 
And the way I describe finishing is like you have your steak and then you put sauce on it. So you finished your steak. Mm, Okay. So with a whiskey, Uh, so you've aged your whiskey in your barrel in a a straight rye whiskey like this. It could be aged in a new American oak container. Okay. So they're going to age it for X amount of time in that. They're then going to move it from that barrel into something else. So you'll see double cask, you'll see port cask, you'll see sherry cask. This one is a rum cask. Um, So just move on to that, I guess. Gonna have a little bit of sweetness. Exactly. That's that's good. Exactly. So we're also looking. Did you hold it ten seconds? He drank no, it. He did it. But again, that's totally fine because the methodology that I'm telling you I is... I like your methodology. Oh, good. I'm glad. Enjoy it I the really way you do. like it. Enjoy it the way you like because it. Because I don't have the burn on the second, third, and fourth time. Yeah. I'm, I just really believe that you should enjoy... So you were using the term vice before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These are... It's a vice. But another way you can look at enjoying a bottle of whiskey or a bottle of anything, it's like, it's like reading a book. good. Mm. And, you know, sometimes you can power through a book. Sometimes you want to sit with it and Just really enjoy. Enjoy, it. enjoy it. And some, you know, sit with some, drink some, who cares? Like, you, should, right. you should be enjoying yourself. Yes. And especially, like, we're enjoying a cigar. Cigars slow you down, right? Uh, it's very hard to power a cigar. Yeah, I mean, you need time. Exactly. You need to sit and enjoy. And it's a great opportunity, especially as, like, you know, in here we are in 2024, and especially you know, in this age that we have of digital culture and a lot of, um, what's the right word I want to use for this? Instant uh, gratification. I was, I was going to go more with, uh, the ability for people to have voices that I don't think should have voices. Oh, that sure. So Everybody has a voice. That yeah. also, yeah. that also, especially in masculine culture and okay. especially the amount of toxic masculinity that can be out there mm. to be able to have something like a cigar and a whiskey and sit and contemplate and you can have the social aspect, uh-huh. and two of my dearest friends of the whole world, our thing that we do is we get together, and we sit either in the pool or in the backyard, and we smoke cigars, and we talk. I love and it. We, and in the pool. That's good nice. conversation. And, and, like and, we're doing and, right and, now. And it's, having, it's cool. about having a good conversation. It's, it's having And the cigar that, keeps you there because it takes its time. Exactly. <laughs> wow. And even you know when you want to smoke a cigar by yourself, it's, it's like meditation. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. gives you a chance, and as that's why you smoke three to four a day. Oh. Yeah, you're just meditating, JD. Just meditating. Oh. <laughs> very, very, spir- very so, spiritually centered. That's a heck of a way to put now, it. But now we got gotcha. you. You know, especially you know the the young, the the some millennials, the Gen Zs, and you get this this influence of toxic masculinity that's put into it. Okay. And cigars are a hyper masculine thing. For a lot of people, the perception. They, I feel like it's all about the character and how you act, Ex- though, exact, as opposed to what I'm you do. saying. More like popular culture, yeah, you know, versus sure. versus what it really what is. Reality is okay. exactly. So most pop- of my friends who smoke cigars are female. Yeah, absolutely. Um, women, Uh-oh. there's a huge there's a huge culture right, of women smoking one. cigars. Give me one. You want a cigar? I'll grab you one of the box. <laughs> you want to do a drag? Um, yeah, I'll do a drag. Mine, I, I don't have cooties, so you can. I do don't a drag. care. So, <laughs> um, giving That's giving true. people an don't opportunity. Don't inhale, mother. Don't inhale. Sent to the mouth. Unless you want to fall in the pool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll be puking later if you do. But giving people an opportunity to <laughs> sit and yeah, think with themselves. More. Keep going. And, and, yeah, and I reflect. Can see that. Yeah. Um, younger people, you know, they're, we're I really like trying it. to get more young people like to smoke it. cigars. Yeah, okay. That's good stuff. And yeah, so I, like that. I think to take it in a more mental health kind of way mm-hmm. where you get to sit there on your own or with friends. You're right. And, and, Really take the relax. time to relax with something because we live in a very rushed go 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 exactly constantly oh, on the go constantly on the move goodness, Well, it's we it's, it's like a vape right gotta you zone, can take your vape a... anywhere you go and take your hits wherever mm-hmm. you are mm-hmm. Versus can't smoke a cigar in a restaurant mm-hmm. 99.999% of the time um, Guys, th- Is that it, legal it, anywhere anymore? So, uh, so funny enough, smoke. But I'll say this though: if I'm at a restaurant, restaurant I yeah. probably don't want. Cool. I don't want I you enjoy smoking a cigar because I want to enjoy my food, not a cigar smoke. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. so I smoke. Can, I can see a cigar, a steak, and whiskey <laughs> going very well together. All right, Ron Swanson. <laughs> so, uh, so smoke the the lounge that I that I work with um, yeah. actually this is a, a full bar. And a full restaurant. No they have a full tapas menu. Right. Um, Didn't they get awarded something lately? Oh, that's awesome. Probably. Or, what are some of the? Uh, you've got they, some. Aren't like, they ranked high? All right, David. Tomorrow night. Rank high? High? I know he. You said the comedy nights. And so yeah. So we. Yeah. So smoke does all kinds of fun events. Um, uh, the the second and fourth uh, Thursday of the month, um, we have uh, we call it the smoke show. 
Wow. It is a free comedy show hosted by Gabe Lopez from the Dirty at 1230. So for Vegas locals, that's been going on for 11 years down at the South Point. So if you don't want to stay out till four in the morning, you can come, you can you come can to the come lounge. Home on, at three. You can come three. No, we get, we get done at like 1030 or 11, um, which is way better than three, um, in my opinion. But it's awesome, fully uh, touring comics from all over the country. Love it. Love it. Um, oh, nice. We do pairing seminars once a month or more. Uh, we have uh, business networking events. Um, oh, that's it's, awesome! That's it's, it's really the the gentleman who started the started the lounge. His name is Brad. Um, Brad's been here in town for thirty five years, and really had this vision of creating a place of camaraderie and giving a giving a space for people to come and work and relax and enjoy themselves. There's a full conference table with power, so I go in there with my laptop, and that's where I get most of my work done. We call it my office. Oh, um, you're not. That's not too far from where I live. Yeah. I might need to get my office. Come swing, over come there swing through. Um, ask for Brad. Yeah, He's I might the need owner. To put my real estate office where your office is. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's the beauty of working in booze. I can kind of work from wherever there's a bottle of liquor. Um, <laughs> that's a... Take your computer and you can go have a bottle, yeah. have a drink and do your real it's estate. A, it's a great spot. Um, so uh, tell tell us about this because Rare Character makes some really cool stuff. It's a beautiful label too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Thank single you. barrel means that yeah. it's from the barrel itself as opposed to all, a compilation of all the barrels. Well, that's a great question. It can, it, no. yeah, meaning yes. that each bottle might taste a little bit differently. Well, so yeah. single barrel federally has no regulation on it, so oh. it, it it takes things like these cool private barrel picks to really know okay. you're getting. A bottle, yeah. a, a limited release, you know, one of a couple hundred at max kind of thing. Okay. Um, you know, you'll see some big brands where, you know, you can go to every bar and liquor store around the country and buy so and so single barrel, okay. but it always tastes the same. Mm. Weird. Like something like Blanton's was that like the first single well, barrel? It was the first marketed single barrel. Right. Okay. There were others. There before. are others, but they're 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 a great example where it's like Blanton's tastes like Blanton's. Mm. If I, I just don't think it does, I think everyone is. Different. Do you? I oh, I too. I don't. I think they're all Blanton's is Blanton's. Really? Yeah, but that's you, my that's my opinion. You're coming over. Is it a silly question? The amount of whiskeys that you all have tried, can I? If I was to ask your favorite, is is that a two? Jack Daniels. No kidding. Old number seven. No kidding. No hesitation. Old number seven he on the rock. Mom's liquor cabinet whiskey yeah. right there. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm I had that with, for him growing up. I'm going with what we call a bottom shelf whiskey, and that would be Old Over Holt Rye. Oh, it's delicious. Wow. I don't it's know that. It's $17. Been, seven, it's $18. If, if so when you say bottom shelf, you mean literally the bottom shelf? Yes. This one, I'm you definitely will find getting some sweetness on the bottom on this shelf. Um, oh, <laughs> is my correct or wrong? You're right. Wait, say it again. I'm getting like... Almost like a like a Cinnabon sweetness. Like it. Yes, like, it's a Cinnabon. Yes, you may. Wow, like I'm getting like a it over. So birthday cake or something like yes, something like frosting. Are. Frosting. Wow. So this is. Want to try a little bit, guy? Oh, I want to try this one. <laughs> this is. A, you need like just a, a little mark. sip of it out there in production land. Guy, we'll get you an Uber home. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> or depending on where you live. <laughs> Listen yeah, this is like, ooh, this is good. So this is a very special pick to me. Um, because? Wow. I, my stepfather died in 2020. I'm not sorry. from, not from COVID. Uh, he didn't tell us that he had cancer. Aww. And he just went downhill in a year. Okay. So um, a little while ago, a couple years ago, I started a fan group for Rare Character. And all of a sudden, this it was nowhere. Nobody knew anything about it, but it was released in Vegas. We we picked a bunch, had a bunch, I think, liquor lineup, uh, had them. Eureka released them first, I think. And um, this owner joins and says, hey, thanks for starting this group. And I reach out to him, and his name's Pete Nemanglotsky, and I look. You know, stalk his profile, and Pete lives in Vegas. I'm like, hey, dude, I live in Vegas too, and that started a, a, a very good friendship. So he was a co-founder with a guy named Pablo Moy, and uh, Pablo owns restaurants and bars in um, Los Angeles area. And um, there's a bug on me, and I don't like bugs. <laughs> um, so uh, I I started with. Pete introducing him to smaller stores, smaller restaurants in exchange for 
Consulting. And your name is on the label. So yeah, this this one's a oh, pick I for me. That. It's fantastic. So this is Michael and JB Guns in memory of Chief 107. Wow. Chief 107 was my stepfather. Wow. Uh, he That's was nice. a 45 year fire chief, 50 year fireman. Wow. And he was a lifelong educator in my school district. So when he passed away, um, he basically raised me um, and gave me, he made me who I am today. So at 14, I became a volunteer firefighter. So I started wow. a charity fund in his memory. And I think we've given, or at the end of this year, we would have given in the last three years, $50,000 worth of uh, wow. scholarships to volunteer firefighters. That's amazing. And That's nice. Not, That's believe very it or nice. Not, I think, I think 80% of those have been awarded to females. Hmm. So that wow. makes me happy. Wow. Uh, so last year, I actually created a nonprofit and uh, otherwise we were just raising funds and people were donating it straight to the uh, bold.org charity. So um, wow. one night there's a lot of brand owners who live in Vegas. Uh, so I had a tasting at my place after we released this and we did a blind and this, this came out number one. Somebody, I don't know who it says, was like, you should submit this to the uh, Tasting Alliance in New York. So I submitted it to the Tasting Alliance in New York, and uh, this pick got a double gold. It's fantastic. Congratulations. So, hey, I, I'm done. That's yeah. It's fantastic. That's something to be proud of. So, double gold means that every judge ranked it a gold, wow. so then it gets a double gold. That's wow. awesome. Um, so That's well, I, awesome. I was reading the label. You age this in cachaça barrels? No, this one's Ambarana. Okay. I don't know what now, either Pete, of those words mean. Pete does have a cachaça brand. <laughs> got it. It's um, a cachaça. <laughs> I know. I was like, what? It's a... South American. It's very popular in like uh, Peru yeah. and Brazil. Oh. That and okay. in San Diego, it's like one of the biggest drinks that they make there. So. And what the, is it? What's in it? I I don't know how to describe it. I'd have to get Pete here. To yeah, do okay. that. that's an interesting what, conversation. Okay. Which we could. Well, here's what so. the wax fascinates right, that's me. That's the next podcast. The wax. <laughs> is, is that, um, did Maker's Mark start the wax? They did. Pretty much. Yeah. No kidding. So Maker's Mark uh, started the wax thing. It was actually started by Margie Samuels. Okay. Who was the mom? Who was the wife and the mother? So nice to have a professor here. Um, I love it. And so uh, she wanted to create a way to make all the bottles stand out and make all the bottles be unique. Okay. And so she came with the idea of doing the wax strip. And uh -huh. um, I learned this. I was fortunate enough to go to a uh, Margie Mark uh, Women's Only uh, International Women's Day. Uh, that must have been fun. I, uh, I didn't read the invitation well. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was. Did the, they accept you there? So I was. And the, they allowed you in. They did allow me in. I That's was the. Awesome. I was the only man with twenty-five women. <laughs> Great ratio. Good I was not going to complain about that. But I learned all about how the the wax drip uh, was kind of what made that she brought that to the brand. So when it comes to bottles, um, a makes them cool. Mm -hmm. I think that it makes them always stand out. Makes them unique. I agree. It also guarantees a perfect seal. Okay. So there are three enemies to all alcohol: mm -hmm. light air and radical uh temperature fluctuation okay well light lights mm. like this aren't going to bother it just don't keep it in full sunlight you'll be fine yeah okay. sunlight. um that's why a lot of people have their their bar in like a basement or a speakeasy a, or away dark. or just away from the window Got yeah. It. Okay. yeah um with radical air, radical temperature fluctuation like don't put it on in the freezer and then let it get warm <laughs> on the counter and then put it back in the freezer and put it back on the counter. don't do that okay. you're ruining it, huh? it you're just gonna do you're gonna do damage to the chemical body of what you're drinking but the when you get into the air so a sealed bottle of whiskey sealed okay. bottle of anything um, the gap between the top of the liquid and the top of the bottle is called the eulage. Okay. And that eulage is not oxygen. It's not air. It's argon, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. It's neutral gas. Okay. So as soon as you uh, open your bottle, that flies out and I replace it with air, which is why the bottles will change over time. Well, these aren't perfect seals. You know, they're, there's still, you know, microscopic gaps to this. Yeah. But with a wax seal guarantees a perfect seal until mm. you pop it until you pop it. it interesting exactly so it's just a cool way to especially with like these super premium bottles like these really cool um independent bottlings and private barrel picks yeah it's a way to really make your bottle truly shelf stable okay um you know there's a there's a whole conversation we can have about the secondary market I think it's the devil, but that's me. Oh, we need to have a podcast. I think we, on yeah. Oh, I think I, we. I, I hate, I hate the secondary market. But I know. The, <laughs> but 
All right, next we're not month get I'll be back it. in yeah. town. Yeah. But we'll have a, yeah, when you're, let's when you're, get, when you're getting into bottles that have a wax cap, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's really good for a secondary market. Okay. Cheers, be- my friend. Okay. Yeah. Well, honestly, let's. Cheers, everybody. Yeah, I'm already finished. I'm, I'm ahead of you guys. Well, what the heck? <laughs> well, all right, well, don't cheers. forget mom over here. This was amazing. <laughs> this was uh, great. Where can people find you? Yeah, totally. So you can you can uh, find me. Um, you can follow me called It's Just Booze. IJB, it's just booze. Um, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all the things. Um, please follow and subscribe. But uh, also, uh, every month, I'm with Smoke Cigar Lounge uh, here in Las Vegas. Um, we do our monthly pairing seminar, and I'm there four, five, six, seven days a week, something like that. <laughs> oh. um, dep- it depends. So we know where to stock you. I need yeah, to come out there. It's, very, it's, it's pretty easy I'll to find me. But yeah, it's just booze. Uh, I do private in-home tastings courses, and we'll go 18 levels deep as far as you want on on anything Sweet. alcohol related. It's, it's it's a good time. So. So you and do private parties. Yep, private parties, corporate events, bachelor and parties, whatever. The feedback that I've heard is amazing. Aw, thanks. So like. Well, he's very knowledgeable. Well, super knowledgeable, and exactly. He's the from, professor. He's yes, the professor. He what everybody says is like. When I when I'm in figuring out how I want to do my tastings for when I launch my brand, everybody was like, "Reach out to this guy. He'll teach you how to do it the I best it. way." Oh wow! And you know we've probably been following each other for years. Yep. <laughs> and uh, I'm so glad we could bring y'all together. Yeah, because Vegas is a small town. But oh. You don't necessarily meet everybody. Run every, everybody. You guys are gonna make me blush. Oh, you already are. I see it. Blushing is oak. I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't uh, my mom. Michael, where can people find you? <laughs> That's a good thing. Well, my Instagram is. Uh, Vegas whiskey chaser, but I finally did a professional Facebook profile, All right. so I can kind of launch oh, my so brand and barrel pick. So I'm. You so, also run a group on Facebook. So what yeah. are you on Facebook? Uh, Michael Bosch. Okay, um, I'm gonna follow you. So also I, Las Vegas whiskey I'm drinkers. Both of you. Yeah, um, Las Vegas whiskey drinkers. I'm just a fan of them. They run their own thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm part of that group, too. I thought it was you. My bad. You, no, no, no. That, that's Ryan and Shannon, and it's changed a little bit, and uh, those guys and gals are amazing. Okay. They're close friends of mine. <laughs> um, but I'm launching a bourbon brand, a whiskey brand, a white rye band. Uh, it'll have a few um, different brands. The first one I'll launch is uh, Devil's Angel. This was a group pick that I did as a test. Um, I like that bottle. It, it, yeah, I did a contest for someone to design it. This, this is just, it's just to get the, the whiskey out there and see if people liked it. So my, my blend that I had now, uh, it just Locker won tape. soul. He's for, ready. It just, right, give me it a just moment. won. Uh, <laughs> I'm my, catching my, up. My first release is going to come out as uh, Bosch's Reserve Blend. Uh, I sourced that from Whiskey Thieves. They do a great job. Whiskey they do thieves. a great job. So I sourced it from Whiskey <laughs> Thieves. Unfortunately, Whiskey Thieves, Thank you. I don't know if it's due to me or due to just how amazing their staff is, but they've blown up over the past year, and Whiskey Thieves can't supply me any more aged bourbon. Oh. So they will do new lay for me, which means they're going to take my mash bill, whatever mash bill I pick, and... Uh, lay it down and age it for me. Um, but Devil's Angel just took a silver in San Francisco. Fantastic. A silver is pretty good in San Francisco because it's huge. There's 500 bourbons. They're comparing you to each other. Oh, wow. And But wow. this one I never sent. This was just uh, 300 bottles went to friends of mine. And Can I be your friend? You can be my <laughs> friend. I like friends. Um, I, I am... I, I come from 20 years of hotel experience where I was the HR guy that, you know, everybody hated yeah. or loved. <laughs> Depending what A you said loved, about everyone. Yes. <laughs> so the food and beverage guys to to uh, get on my good side would invite me to every whiskey tasting that's or cool. every wow, alcohol that's tasting. That's awesome. So I spent 20 years refining my palate as an HR guy drinking at work. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, That's so, a great job. Yeah. Cheers to you. Cheers. cheers. Well, also, cheers, cheers for being on the podcast tonight. Oh, thank thank you. Uh, we're going to enjoy you. this post recording. Yep. Last thing I want to say is thank you for being one of the Vegas Faces. Oh, thank you for bringing thanks us for having, in. Thank you for having yeah. here. We appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for including mom. Oh, cheers, everybody. Oh, cheers, it's so great to have mom. Always better to have mom here. So, yeah, yeah. definitely.
Cheers, you guys. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing to Vegas Faces on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok under the name Gavri Group. That's G-A-V-R-I Group. Thanks, everybody. See you at the next episode.